Okay, so we've got a deal then. I'll go out and make a video about the monster you need to hunt, and you'll actually go out and do the job you were shipped across an ocean to do. And in exchange, I won't kick you off that cliff behind you. Oh, come on, dude. That's a lot of work. And I'm helping out here at the canteen. I'm trying all the new meals the chef wants to put on the menu. That is not a job. And even if it was, I'm sure we have plenty of other hungry hunters that could help. <sighs> Honestly, it's a miracle you haven't been fired and sent home yet. Ah, oh, it's cool, man. I just ask all the other hunters to do me a solid and do my jobs while they're out on their missions. Long as it gets done, the commander doesn't care. <sighs> and that's the problem with having one guy in charge of making sure the work gets done. Alright, so what monster do I have to talk about? Oh, it's a giant flying squirrel, dude! Uh... Could you be a bit more specific? I can think of two flying squirrel monsters off the top of my head. Oh, there's also a giant snake out there, too! Oh, I get it now. I, I know what monster you mean. And an electric eel, too. Why are there so many creepy monsters out there, man? Dude, that's all one monster. They're pretty common, actually. Whoa, dude! Monsters can be more than one thing? You really don't know anything about the monsters we hunt, do you? We hunt monsters? I am going to push you off that cliff one of these days. It is not a matter of if, only when. Nature is a truly wonderful, if sometimes strange thing. Sometimes even seeming like Mother Nature just reached into a bin and threw something together. Such as the hummingbird moth, which looks like a flying crawfish, that crazy duck bill beaver tailed creature, the platypus, or indeed our topic of today's conversation the Toby Kadachi. Certainly one of the most unique monsters of all time especially among the relatively straightforward fanged wyverns, Toby Kadachi is a strange amalgamation of creatures wonderfully adapted to life in the forest. It has the slim and agile body of a squirrel with additional claws that allow it to easily climb up trees but it's not just any squirrel. No, it has the extra flaps of skin along its sides, from its front legs to its hind legs, allowing it to spread open in the air, deploying these flaps of skin and slowing its descent, even allowing it minimal gliding to gain extra distance to slam down on opponents with its powerful tail. In addition, it has a head that resembles that of a snake, specifically one from the Colubrid family, the largest family of snakes with 249 genera. These snakes are mostly non-venomous and relatively harmless. Toby Kadachi is not one of those. While it does not often attack by biting, it has curving, backwards-facing teeth, just like a snake, that hook into prey and prevent them from pulling away, lest they have flesh painfully torn away. 
thankfully, this is not something one often has to worry about, as Toby Kodachi are very docile monsters, only really attacking if they are attacked first, or if they come across you fighting another monster. Because I guess these monsters just see fight going on and think, MOSH PIT! Toby Kadadi is mostly known for its powerful, spiky tail, its long, quote-unquote, cape of fur going down its back from its spiny tail and being a fast and agile quadruped. In that regard, it actually has quite a bit in common with another fanged wyvern, Zinogre. To the point that many Old World hunters seeing Toby believed it to be a relative of Zinogre, and New World hunters seeing Zinogre believing it to be related to Toby. Is this Toby's grandfather? Is this Toby's grandfather? And much like Zinogre, Toby is a thunder monster that is incapable of actively generating its own electricity, instead getting it from outside sources. But whereas Zinogre gets it from its vulgar bugs, Toby is a bit more independent. Despite being a scaly creature, it has a lovely, fine coat of fur on most of its body, and as it makes its way through the dense foliage of the forest, it moves and sways, often brushing up against some of the foliage of the forest, its fur scraping against this surface and building up a bit of friction as it passes, gathering a static charge in the experience that travels through the fur into Toby's thunder organ. However, Toby Kadachi is smart and knows this charge takes time to build up, so it uses it sparingly, only resorting to it when it becomes difficult and it enrages, its hair standing on end. Such abilities are often useful when facing off against its foes, while like I said before, Toby Kadachi is a docile creature that doesn't like to fight. There are simply times where fighting is unavoidable. Such as whenever a Puke Puke is in town and feeling a little bit big for its britches, going around and messing with anything it thinks won't fight back. So Toby sometimes has to teach it its place. And of course, the time when fighting is the absolute only option, when a Toby faces its greatest enemy, the Anjanath, using its electricity to shock the beast, giving it a chance to do some damage, giving it the best chance to survive. I said survive, I didn't say win. Now, you may be wondering about Toby's coloring. After all, blue and gray are somewhat out of place colors in the forest, primarily filled with greens and browns and, you know, every color except blue and gray. Surely that must make camouflage impossible. And you'd be right, it does. Luckily, Toby doesn't really need camouflage, since A, it's faster than most, if not all other creatures in the forest, and B, it can climb trees and stay out of sight, getting into the perfect position and dropping down on its prey. So it has a decent pick of pretty much whatever it wants to eat in the forest as long as it stays out of the way of Anjanath and any apex level monsters that roams the forest, as it has no issue getting a meal, 
so it usually never gets desperate enough to attack a human. They also prefer smaller prey, such as moss wine, woodland terexes, and jagras on rare occasions. In the rare instances one must face off against a Toby Kadachi, you must rival the creature's agility with your own. Standing still and waiting for it to come to you is a good way to get yourself killed, as the creature can jump about and get behind you almost as fast as you can blink. Your best option is to move when he moves, dodging his attacks and striking back afterwards. As for the creature's weaknesses, our snake squirrel is weakest to water, with fire and ice also effective, but with resistance to thunder. As for ailments that can be inflicted on the creature, they all can. Every type of ailment is at least really effective, with poisoning being as effective as water. In addition, breaking Toby's claws will make it far less effective at climbing, and it's more likely to fall out of the tree, giving you some extra hits as it gets up. But, never underestimate this creature. Remember, Toby Kadachi is very fast and agile, so if you aren't careful, it will use the strategy I recommended against it on you. And many of its attacks can be quite difficult to dodge if you aren't ready, such as its charging bite or its 360 tailspin. And of course, the mighty tail slam. And just as a reminder, it has the flying squirrel flaps as another method of both staying out of melee range and outmaneuvering you. Other common attacks of this creature feature a simple bite, claw swipes, and wide sweeping tail attacks that can prove difficult to dodge. And, as previously stated, Toby Kadachi is capable of storing up static electricity to use to deadly effect. Toby can then add a bit of spark to its bite, claw, or tail swipes, and most dangerously, into its jumping tail slam, releasing a minor electrical explosion upon impact. These attacks can also leave you with a condition known as Thunder Blight, which basically leaves your brain on the verge of a short circuit, making you easier to stun. Fortunately, a Nullberry will get you all fixed up nice and quick. So, that is the garden variety of Toby Kadachi. A very unique creature with a number of adaptations perfectly suited for survival, yet is willing to live in peace with those around it, only resorting to violence when it needs to hunt or if bullies step up to it and need to be checked. Something I can very much get behind. However, Things soon changed with the discovery of a new landmass, the Hoarfrost Reach. Despite being a strange, new, and unfamiliar place, a handful of familiar monsters had been found there, and Toby Kadachi was one of them. However, this new place was not well suited for our favorite flying snake as the lush vegetation it required to gain its static charge was few and far between. The abundant trees they climbed to stay out of reach of predators were nowhere to be found, and the monsters living in the hoarfrost reach often had thick fur that insulated well against electricity 
especially Toby's old friend. That's right, Anjanath was back. We will go over this bad boy more in depth at a later date. But to understand the main reason Toby is different here, you need to understand its main rival. This Anjanath is much stronger, whereas a normal Anjanath are dominated by Rathalos, Fulgur is able to contend with Apex monsters like Tigrex, and now swapped its fire power for the thunder element, gaining a total resistance to it. So, if Toby just barely survived against a weaker version of Anjaneth that could actually be harmed by electricity, do you think it stands any kind of a chance against a stronger one that is immune to its main offensive strategy? No, 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 no. And you would be correct in that assumption. So Toby had to adapt. It became stronger to match the newer, more powerful rivals it was encountering, and needed a more effective weapon, as its old one was no longer viable in this new environment. Which brings us to... a Viper, Toby Kadachi. Having done some shopping out of the fall catalog, this new Toby Kadachi is quite a bit more vibrant than its normal bluish gray counterpart. It still cannot survive the extreme colds of the Hoarfrost Reach, so it lives in the deeper, warmer caves of the Reach, often taking a nice nap near a lovely, warm, slightly toxic looking pond. And for the most part, it's still the same docile, peaceful creature that just wants to go about its day. However, to any nature lovers out there, you know what vibrant colors generally mean. And for those that don't, vibrant, out of place colors usually mean I'm poisonous, back off. Yes. This Toby Kadachi has traded its electricity for poison, and an incredibly potent one at that. It even puts a Rathalos to shame. Normal poison is a hindrance, but poison from a Viper Toby Kadachi is legitimately deadly, capable of killing a hunter in a few minutes if they aren't carrying any antidotes. The poison is located in deadly sharp spikes in its tail, very well hidden by its fur. Any contact with the tail will result in a nasty dose of poison infecting you. And to make matters worse, these spikes can even be shot short distances with a flick of its tail to hit several targets at a time in similar fashion to a Nargakuga. So you are not safe anywhere within close to medium range of the beast. And as one final nasty surprise, the bite of this fanged wyvern contains a neurotoxin that paralyzes whoever has been bitten by it leaving them completely vulnerable to a follow-up tail hit from the Viper that will likely finish the job. And if the hit itself doesn't, the poison will, because the bite is still poisonous too. It poisons and paralyzes you at the same time. That's just not fair. It also had to become more bold and start hunting bigger prey. Since Mosswine don't live in the Hoarfrost Reach, Vespoids are comparatively few and far between, and the Jagras equivalent of the Reach, known as Wolgs, are ferocious. 
noxious pack animals that viciously act like an unholy combination between snakes and badgers. Oh, oh dear God! Get it off of me! Get it off! Get off me! Somebody help me for the love of God, help me! So, rather than risking death at the paws, claws, and teeth of those psychos, it instead goes after the much larger Popo. Even if it's still usually only the babies, but those can still put up a good fight. If they have to. This new choice of weaponry still doesn't allow it to defeat the Anjanath, but much like with the normal Toby, the adaptation at least allows it to survive a tussle with the furry brute wyvern. So you might be wondering, but wait, if it adapted to contend with Fulgar Anjanath, why does it still lose? Well, the thing about that is, it kind of did a bad job at adapting. As previously stated, it has to stay in warm caves in order to survive the freezing cold of the new environment. So the ice element is a solid choice against it, with the thunder element being most effective. Yes, that is correct. It is weakest against the element of the monster it mainly evolved to combat. Also, as a fun little side note, the Thunder Toby Kadachi is weak to poison, and the poison version is weak to the thunder. Well, if that isn't ironic. And all ailments, except for the obvious choices of poison and paralysis, are all at least decently effective against it. The only thing that really won't work against Viper Toby would be to use water on it. At least it gained the resistance to what its other form is weak to. I guess that counts for something. So, to summarize, Zappy Zappy, good. Status ailments, okay. Splashy Splashy, bad. So, there you have it. A toxic Toby Kadachi. Forced to switch up its style to survive a harsh new land where its old style simply could not cut it. Gaining status ailments to combat its aggressors and make bringing down stronger prey possible where it was impossible before. A true testament to the fact that no matter the adversity, nature and life will always find a way. Uh, oh god, not again! Somebody help me! So there we go, guys. That is the lore on the Toby Kadachi. I'm sorry I didn't mention anything from Rise, but Rise really doesn't expand too much on uh, any returning monsters. They saved uh, the lore and such for the newer monsters, but... Anyway, I really like Toby Kadachi. It's definitely one of the more unique monsters we got from world and it's just so cool like the body of a flying squirrel the head of a snake with electric powers it's it's just awesome and i love the docile monsters that you can just walk around with and toby is just that as for viper toby it's really cool i love the colors i'm not too much a fan of poisonous monsters and especially the ones with Noxious Poison, which is the upgraded version, but it's still manageable. You can still deal with it, and it is just a cool monster, like I said before. And interestingly enough, though, you actually never see regular Toby Kadachi go out to hunt. You'll, if you follow 
Viper Toby around enough, he'll go out and hunt a popo, but regular Toby, no, the only stops I've, and I've followed him for a while, trust me, the only stops I ever see him make is, well, he comes here to drink, he'll occasionally stop to rub up against stuff and build up his static charge, and then come up to a ledge to sleep, that's it, he's never actually seen hunting. So that's an interesting little tidbit. So, as for next time, I'm not sure. I'll leave that up to you guys. What would you like to see? Would you like to see Palumu, Puke Puke, or Anjaneth? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget, if you like this and want to see more, go ahead and slash that subscribe button. If you liked this video, give a quick cut to the like button. Leave a comment down below. Share it around with all your friends. Click the notification bell so you never miss it when I upload a video. And be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Then I'll see you in the next video. But until then, my people, stay sharp.